Hi, it's Katrina. Today's video is sponsored by Wondrium. Your brain is going to love this place. You know we love to explain things around here, especially when it comes to amazing and mysterious discoveries. But if you want to learn even more, then you are going to love Wondrium. It's got endless hours of documentaries and courses ranging from historic lectures to interactive cooking shows. Just like you, I love learning about all kinds of new things, and Wondrium is an excellent resource. They have courses and lectures taught by experts who are professionals in their field. You can learn about astrophysics, how to brew beer, or even how to play the ukulele. I particularly enjoyed the lecture series about important historic battles called the Decisive Battles of World History. The professor shares his enthusiasm and passion for history, covering almost 4,000 years through the lens of epic battles that changed history as we know it. I had no idea that the United States gained back the upper hand in the aftermath of Pearl Harbor during a four-minute window that was dictated not only by a clever battle strategy, but also by a sizable amount of sheer luck. And this is just scratching the surface. Please visit Wondrium.com by clicking on the link in the description below and start your free trial today. Show your support for Origins Explain and begin to broaden your horizon. You won't regret it! Number 9. The Ringed Lady of Herculaneum Of course you've heard of Pompeii, the ancient Roman city that was wiped out by a catastrophic volcanic eruption in 79 AD. But it wasn't the only city that was destroyed by Mount Vesuvius. The nearby city of Herculaneum was also completely destroyed, but the experience itself was much different. While it was much closer to the volcano than Pompeii was, Herculaneum avoided being rained on by debris for nearly a day after the eruption began. Residents had time to see what was happening and analyze the situation. They weren't vaporized in an instant, and so they had some time to plan their next move. Archaeologists initially found very few human remains at Herculaneum, so they assumed that most people escaped the disaster. Yet, as it turned out, they were wrong. In 1982, a team discovered piles of skeletons along the town's beach and in a series of vaulted chambers, and they believe that there may be even more bodies waiting to be discovered. But if the people of Herculaneum had any opportunity to escape, why didn't they? During the eruption's second phase, the volcanic cloud it created collapsed, resulting in deadly pyroclastic surges, the first of which spewed forth at 100 feet per second. Anyone who wasn't gone from the town by then had little to no chance to leave, and they were either vaporized or buried. One of the most iconic individuals discovered at Herculaneum is the Ringed Lady. Also called the Lady of the Rings, she became famous for the elegant jewelry she was wearing when the eruption killed her. She was one of the first skeletons to make the news after the discoveries, and she remains fresh in people's minds today. Like many of the individuals found at Pompeii and Herculaneum, she serves as a sobering reminder of the trauma many people experienced firsthand during their final moments in the deadly shadow of Mount Vesuvius. Number 8. A New Dinosaur Species Scientists in Missouri recently announced the discovery of a new dinosaur species and genus. Dubbed Parasaurus missouriensis, the creature was identified based on the skeleton of a juvenile found by paleontologist Guy Darrow. P. missouriensis was a duck-billed dinosaur that grew up to 35 feet long by adulthood. The recently unearthed specimen was roughly the size of a Volkswagen, according to Darrow, who has been working at the site for 40 years. Sea levels were much higher when the creature roamed the Earth around 70 million years ago. At the time, North America was divided by a body of water called the Western Interior Seaway. While a wealth of fossils have been found along what was once the former sea's western shore, the Missouri fossil site represents one of the few that would have been along the eastern shore. Kind of a west shore versus east shore situation. Pete Makovicki, curator of dinosaurs at Chicago's Field Museum, has explored dinosaur fossil sites all over the world. He described the Missouri property as one of the most unique he's ever seen. Researchers are now keeping the location a secret for now, while they work to secure the site, because they don't want anyone stealing their dino bones. They could be worth millions! Makovicki said that he believes there are more dinosaur fossils in the area waiting to be found. 
Given this new species discovery, it's possible there may be other undiscovered dinosaurs yet to be found in the area. Number 7. Russian Silver Horde When people in southwestern Russia caught word of an impending Mongol invasion in 1237, they buried their treasure in secret hiding spots with plans to retrieve their valuables later on. But not everyone ended up coming back to the burial sites, and modern archaeologists have unearthed several of the hordes. But a recently discovered collection of over two dozen pieces of silver jewelry stood out as different from the rest. The hoard consists of over five pounds of silver, including 14 bracelets, five rings, four silver ingots, and more. Based on their style, the items appear to date back to the late 11th or early 12th century. There were no nearby settlements at the time, but the jewelry was found near a road that led to a major trading hub called Old Ryazan. It probably belonged to either a merchant or a thief, according to archaeologist Igor Strykalov, and could have bought at least 10 war horses or 200 sheep. That's quite a stash. Strykalov says that the horde's owner may have buried it out of fear, and that the fears were justified. He could not return for the treasure since he probably died soon after. Number 6. Sakaro Sodo Monoliths There are around 10,000 monoliths at Sakaro Sodo and several other archaeological sites throughout southern Ethiopia, with some standing as high as 20 feet tall. They are found in what's known as the Judeo Zone, which contains the largest number and highest concentration of megalithic steel monuments in Africa. These incredible monoliths vary in size, function, and arrangement. Many are shaped like a phallus. Some are plain, while others bear intricate faces or anthropomorphic designs. They haven't been studied much, and nobody knows how or why they were built. During the 1990s, French scientists concluded that the monuments date back to sometime around 1100 AD. But they were wrong, according to a recent study, which found that the monoliths are roughly 1,000 years older than scientists previously thought. After re-examining them, a team of researchers from Washington State University determined that they were likely built during the 1st century AD. They also found that most of the obsidian artifacts at Sakaro Sodo were created with rock sourced from 186 miles away in northern Kenya. Sadly, many of the monuments have fallen down or broken into pieces. They are currently under consideration as a prospective UNESCO World Heritage Site which would afford them the protection they need to prevent time and the elements from destroying them completely. And now for a mysterious city that kept burning down. But first, want to give a big shout out to Jennifer Ballesteri and Austin Brown, who is a new subscriber. Welcome! If you want to see more videos about amazing and mysterious discoveries, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos like these. Number 5. Burnt City Figurines Archaeologists in southwestern Iran's Burnt City recently announced the discovery of numerous human and animal figurines. Formerly known as Shar e Sukte, the ancient metropolis dates back roughly 5,000 years. From its founding in 3200 BC to its final downfall in 1800 BC, it was home to four different civilizations, all of which burned down in catastrophic fires. Incredible coincidence? Possibly but it does explain why the spot is known as the Burnt City. For some reason, every time the city burned down, a new one was built in its place. But what kept people coming back and rebuilding? The mysterious area was very popular, with various Bronze Age trade routes passing through. Within the remains of the Burnt City itself were the figurines. They consist of cows and other animals, as well as sitting women and standing men, according to archaeologist Hossein Moradi. Additionally, the team unearthed a kiln, but they don't yet know whether it was used for firing pottery, smelting metal, or for something else. Perhaps even more interesting, they found the remains of a prehistoric monkey, which they believe was kept as a pet. The animal's owner buried it inside its cage. Based on the Burnt City's trading connections, Researchers believe that the monkey was imported from northern India or Central Asia. Only 4-5% to of the burnt city has been excavated so far. Investigating is both time-consuming and expensive, and each digging season only lasts 60 days. The archaeology team recently began its 19th season in a residential part of the site, 
Their goal is to reach areas with artifacts left behind from the first period of occupation, which they have found the least evidence of throughout the ongoing excavations. Number 4. A Roman Crucifixion While excavating at a Roman settlement in Cambridgeshire, England in 2017, archaeologists found evidence of a crucifixion in the form of an ankle bone with a nail driven through the heel. The 1900-year-old skeleton belongs to a man who died between the ages of 25 and 35 years old. He was laid to rest with his arms crossed over his chest in one of five cemeteries that have been found near an ancient Roman settlement in Fenstanton. The burial seemed pretty ordinary at first. Field archaeologists bagged the bones without even noticing the nail through the man's heel. After taking a closer look, however, experts noticed the nail which they recently described as the best physical evidence of a Roman crucifixion ever found. Project manager David Ingham told reporters that nothing quite like it has ever been found, so nobody was looking for the nail at first. In other words, it's understandable that it went unnoticed. It's true that crucifixion nails are a rare archaeological find, mainly because the punishment was often carried out using rope, and because the victims rarely received a proper burial. Scientists examined the skeleton in detail and ruled out other possibilities, concluding that the Fenstanton man was, indeed, most likely crucified. He is a rare example of someone not only being crucified with nails rather than rope, but of a crucifixion victim being afforded a respectable burial. Nobody knows who he was or why he was put to death. Although the practice was typically reserved for lower class people, slaves, and rebels. There are only four known discoveries bearing physical evidence of crucifixion worldwide, and at least one of them is questionable in terms of its authenticity, making the Fenstanton Man one of the most remarkable archaeological finds from Roman England to date. Number 3 Ancient Leather Armor in 2013, archaeologists found a nearly complete set of leather armor in a tomb in an extremely dry region of northwestern China. A team of experts from the University of Zurich recently examined the armor in detail. They determined that it was made sometime between the 6th and 8th centuries BC. It belonged to a warrior who rode a horse, and the owner died at around 30 years old. The 2,700-year-old armor originated in the Neo-Assyrian Empire, which encompassed Mesopotamia, the Levant, Egypt, and part of Anatolia. It was brought to China where it was buried in the warrior's grave near the modern-day city of Turfan. The recent analysis is helping researchers better understand the spread of military technology throughout the first millennium BC. They described the leather armor as acting like an extra layer of skin which protected its wearer's vital organs during combat without making it difficult for the fighter to move. Armor was extremely valuable at the time because the materials were expensive and it was a lot of work to make. Wearing it was a privilege reserved for the elite, and warriors were rarely buried with it. But the use of leather, bronze, and iron made it more affordable and easier to get, enabling large ancient armies to gear up for battle. Ordinary soldiers of lower social rankings were able to fight efficiently, and, as this discovery shows, they were even sometimes laid to rest with their armor. Number 2. Blair Athelman Around 1,500 years ago, a 45-year-old man died and was buried in the Scottish Highlands. Construction workers discovered his skeleton in 1985 and called the police, who summoned archaeologists to the scene. Experts dated the remains to sometime between 400 and 600 AD, and they learned a few other interesting things about him as well. Nicknamed the Blair Athelman after his final resting place, he spent the last 5 to 10 years of his life subsisting on pork, freshwater fish, and waterfowl. He ate a similar diet to others who lived in the area at the time, initially leading researchers to believe that he was a local. But a recent analysis detected an unusually high amount of sulfur in his remains compared to others in the area, indicating that the Blair Athel man wasn't a local after all. He likely spent a good portion of his life along Scotland's western coast, and probably arrived in the Highlands shortly before he died. Scientists think that he may have grown up in one of the Hebrides Islands, or that he might have even come from Ireland. 
This and other recent discoveries add to a growing body of evidence that people traveled great distances throughout Scotland during the early medieval period. Researcher Kate Britton, who co-authored a study on the topic, told journalists that these types of movements may have not been uncommon. She also explained that both men and women migrated between coasts and elsewhere, and that they probably had various reasons for making these journeys. Little else is known about the Blair Athol man despite the new findings about his travels. He may have been a member of the Picts, an indigenous Celtic group of people who lived in modern-day eastern and northeastern Scotland during ancient times. Britton said that he was born in a remote area that wasn't yet a part of Pictish territory, yet he migrated to their region and was buried according to their funerary customs. The recent study was sparked by a local fascination with the Blair Athol man and a desire to know more about his life. Perhaps the strong public interest in his story will inspire more investigations. Number 1. Golden-Tongued Mummies Archaeologists recently discovered two intriguing tombs at the El Banasa site, also known as Oxyrhynchus, in what was once Upper Egypt. They dated the burials to sometime between 688 and 525 BC, during Egypt's 26th dynasty. The era is also known as the Saite period, and is named after Sais, which was the empire's capital city at the time. One of the burials consisted of a large limestone sarcophagus with a lid shaped like a woman. Unfortunately, the tomb was raided at some point during antiquity, so some things were missing by the time modern experts found it. Luckily, they discovered another ancient tomb nearby, which remained untouched. Inside it was a sarcophagus belonging to a man, along with over 200 artifacts, including amulets, beads, and figurines. Both mummies had golden tongues. You may be surprised to learn that it wasn't the first time that scientists discovered golden-tongued mummies. Earlier this year, a team unearthed 16 2,000-year-old burials containing poorly preserved mummies with gold foil amulets shaped like tongues in their mouths. The tongues were meant to enable people who had passed on to speak directly to Osiris, the god of the underworld and the judge of the dead. These particular discoveries were made in northern Egypt at the Tapo Cyrus Magna Temple in Alexandria, which isn't exactly near the more recently discovered golden tongue mummies, showing that the tradition was widespread. Thanks for watching! If you'd like to learn about more fascinating archaeological finds, remember to subscribe and I'll see you next time!